No, it was on the village green. Oh, like a, well, that's kind of a field. You had a field day in a field. It, it, Yes, we did, and it's a big field as well. Right. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a lovely day. And, well, it sounds um, like a delight, Judy. Thanks for the invite. Oh, no, that's right. You didn't give me one. Now, I'll give you one next year because we haven't had one for two years, have we, because oh, of COVID. Right. Yeah, right. I'll, re- I'll remember you. Perhaps you could come in on one of the floats, Nick. How about that? <laughs> Let me think about it, Judy. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a lot of thought. Trust me. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Caroline Caroline in South Derbyshire says just sat here munching on a fish finger sandwich toasted on one side only as recommended by you my addition of melted cheese on the fish fingers and coleslaw is uh, delicious Ooh. melted cheese on fish fingers that sounds awful but the coleslaw part absolutely cheese absolutely John emails, regarding the song title, does the bubblegum song Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini get a look in? No, it does not. But thanks for asking. Let's have um, East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Good evening, Nick. Um, yeah, a little thing. That a previous caller accused you of partying during COVID. And, yeah. you know, when somebody says a sort of random statement, and it, does it trigger an image in your head sometimes? And... And I thought of you during early COVID. So you've got Nick broadcasting early COVID and at a party. And I thought, if I walked into a party where everybody had got marigolds on, I'd have been out <laughs> there. Like the yeah, <laughs> believe me, I was not partying. I was either on my <laughs> own in my back garden. And, you know, fortunately, uh, and I, I, I hesitate to say this, but I know that everybody was having a really bad time. But I loved it because the weather was so great and at that place that i was at then i had a south facing garden and so it was just a sun trap and it was just day after day after day with nothing to do it was like a holiday one long long holiday apart from the when i came in to do the show uh, and i was just freaking out to you know not wanting to touch anything so i used to do the show in marigolds so <laughs> so i didn't have to touch anything and the, the amount of sweat that is produced by your hands in those for three hours, God, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, I quite agree. You wouldn't certainly want to have been wearing marigolds touching you, would you? No, no, you would not. <laughs> um, recent rang up, though. Um, I was reading an article today, and it described the present government as a pathocracy. And I thought, democracy, pathocracy, demos, people... Pathocracy, pathos, emotion, what's all that about? So I, I looked up pathocracy, and the definition of pathocracy is a government that's made up of people with personality disorders like <laughs> psychopaths and narcissists. <laughs> Psychopaths, Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. A pathocracy. How do you spell that? Path, as in garden path. Oh. Uh, Right, and then Pathen. the rest of it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pathocracy, as in pathology. Pathocracy. Yeah. So, so then I thought about it, and I thought, well, you've got Miss Whiplash, Pretty Patel. Mm-hmm. You've got the angular humanoid. The angular humanoid. Yeah, angular, and tetchy humanoid, Dominic De- uh, Deckchair Raab. My name's Dominic Raab, and I'm a Tory. And you've got Williamson, and you've got Gove, oh, who can't do an interview without trying to throw a weird... Uh, accents and yeah, you, you, you're running through them too quickly, Williamson. And I, 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 yeah, <laughs> uh, and then Michael Gove. A major capital letters, big news story. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought when you go through them all one by one, <laughs> it sort of fits. A government made up of people with personality disorders. Yeah, it sounds about genuine. right to me. What do you think, Smug? You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. No, he still doesn't know anything. I missed him off, didn't I? What a mistake. You did, yeah. <laughs> okay, cheers, mate. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. 0345 6060 973. Don't forget about the Third Reich swizzle stick. Caroline in South Derbyshire emails just sat here. Oh, no, I read that. Mmm. Fish finger sandwich with coleslaw. Hold the cheese. Mark in Portugal says, uh, the most boring concert I went to was J.J. Kale at the New Victoria Hall. I loved the albums, but the guy had no stage presence at all. They knocked out favourite song after favourite song with no feeling whatsoever. Yawn on, says Mark in Portugal. Boring! Didn't like the J.J. Kale. Well, I don't know what you're expecting, mate. I mean, it's, it's very, very laid-back music. 
he is not going to, um, like uh, Niels Lofgren, <laughs> flip upside down on a trampoline on stage, is he? Just going to sit there and pluck away. Southwark, hello, Vince. Um, hello, is that me? It sounds like you, Vince. Sounds like you, Nick. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. <laughs> You normally you normally give the name where the, they're from after their name. Which yeah, through me, no problem. Now, Southwark. Didn't um, I say Southwark, Vince? You did not yeah. say Southwark. Oh, no, right. or Southwark, as we call it. Right, carry on. Um, I might be able to help you with your misty drummer, Chubby. Oh yeah. You, well, hopefully, um, it sounds like a guy called Billy Cobham. No, no, no. He wasn't that famous. Really? No, he wasn't famous at all. It was a, it was a support act to somebody else who I can't remember either. I, I got it as, as one of these seat filler tickets. It was a jazz gig in um, the Cadogan Hall, which is just off uh, Sloan Square. It. Yeah. I know it. Yep. And um, I, so I can't remember who the main act was, and I really, really can't remember who the warm-up act was, but it definitely wasn't Billy Cobb. It was, it was no one famous like that, no. Right, you you know who Billy Cobb is. Oh, yeah. And his album Spectrum, which I think has been nicked by everybody. Who, who, who right, well, I, 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 I can't remember which albums of his I have, but I know who he is. All right, all right. Well, I was just trying to help, Nick. Right? Well, I appreciate so. the help. Thank you. Even though it was no help at all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Vince. 0345 6060973. Kate emails, I actually find you extra hilarious listening to you at half speed. I don't do it very often and only for about 10 minutes or so, but it does make me laugh out loud even more. Huh. I'm funnier slowed down. <laughs> uh, Penge. Peter. Hello. Yes, Peter. Yes. Um,. I had a nice night out last night. Did you? Walking home, walking home last night, I was very hungry. Mm -hmm. And um, Pizza Hut very kindly gave me a pizza that they was um, going to throw away anyway. Did they? Yeah, which they sometimes do. Why would they, they throw a pizza dinner. away? Um, well, sometimes they get an order that's, you know, oh. burnt or, you know, just gone wrong or they didn't put whatever right. so... They give them away, which is quite good. Well, so you were just home. walking by the front of the shop and they said, Oi, it, It's a known thing that if you pop in there and ask if they have any cancellation. Oh, well, I didn't know it. They're giving away well, free uh, pizza. All you got to do is <laughs> ask. <laughs> I've given my whole thing, a whole star forever now. You realise that, don't you? Well. Everybody will be nicking my pizza. Yeah. Anyway, the moral, the moral of the story... Go on. ...is when I got down the road, there was a chap... Um, in the doorway, wrapped up in a blanket, you know, shivering. And I said, you hungry? Hello, hello, are you hungry? Yeah. And he said, you yeah, a bit. I gave him half of this pizza, and I think I really made his day. Half? So what goes around comes around. Well, yeah, you might get um, half of someone else's good fortune. <laughs> 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 well, I guess that's all right. Yeah, no, that's not bad. Oh, OK. Half then. is fair, surely yeah. half is fair. You get a, you get a ding. <laughs> All right. Thank Th you thanks very a lot. Much, All right. Thank you very much, Peter. Of course, it wasn't that generous because he got it for free. I guess it was his. After he had got it for free, it, it then became his. But um, I don't know. To want that that much praise, really, for giving away something that had been given to him. Uh, if he'd given him some money, perhaps, or his shoes, then I would have. Uh, you know, then it would have been different. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. You know, he, he, he's, he would keep the pizza and give the bloke his shoes. He could tell him to eat those. I'm just trying to help. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. In which we solve people's problems. We really do try to solve people's problems when we can remember to do it, as opposed to just gassing on about who knows what. Uh, they come out on Monday. It's about an hour long. If you wish to be amused and you have an hour spare, then it will be right up your alley. There's over a 100 up there. I cannot believe that we have done so many. 
but we have. They come out once a week. It's an hour. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? And I think you'll love it. If you want us to have a bash at your issue, then you'll have to tell us what it is. We're not mind readers. I send it to nickandcarol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com and be prepared for a certain amount of satisfaction. Ain't that right, Carol? Oh, right, yeah. A certain amount. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Let's have a call from Brighton. Hello, Ben. Oh, hi, Nick. Thanks so much for taking my call. Thanks, Ben. Um, A couple of things to say, really. Um, On the subject of robot hoovers, can I stand in defence of them? Go on. They are marvellous. Are they? Uh, They sort out my house. I bought one for my old mum. She's 82 years old. 82 years old? Yeah. 82, yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, she, it does all the hoovering for her. Laser guided, by the way. Do not buy the rubbish ones. Buy the laser guided ones. <laughs> laser guided. What laser, is, laser guided. What a- anything do, gets what in the way, Tuesday, it will get shot a with a laser across the room. <laughs> yeah. They zoom a laser across the room. They map out your whole house mm-hmm. for you, yeah. and they they get, get underneath the furniture. They're fantastic little things. Yeah. Right. On the I second ser- thing, I seriously, we, seriously doubt it. But go on. No, they, they, they don't trust me. My house is immaculate. Is it? You could eat your dinner off my floor. Mm, you could. Mm. You really could. <laughs> but I won't. Point being, on, <laughs> we very rarely disagree on stuff. I, I'm disappointed to have to ring up and disagree on two oh, things. With. no. Second thing I disagree with you on is is recently built buildings. I live on the 17th, 18th story, sorry, of a council block, top floor. Mm. I never hear a single, I don't hear a dicky bird from my neighbours, nothing. Beautifully, concrete floors, concrete walls, beautifully built buildings. I get ma- magnificent views and I think they're fantastic buildings. Well, when was it and built? My, it was built in uh, 1960, it was built before I was born, uh, 1967 or something like that, I think. Well, well, I'm, I'm not really talking about buildings that were built in 1967, although I seriously doubt that um, that they actually perform as you're describing. You can't hear a thing from any other resident. I, I, look, honestly, look, I'm on top, obviously, I'm on the top floor, so I have a distinct right. advantage because there's no one above Well, me. Who's, who's beneath you? Is it em- well, I don't em- know. I mean, an they're, empty they're, unit? They're, they're very nice people beneath me, right. clearly, because I'm quite a noisy fella. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. So maybe they can hear you and your droning vacuum cleaner all day long and it's doing that, their head may, 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 You're making a lot of suppositions here, Nick, right. if I may say so, right. right? But what I will say is I will say that at the minute, I've never been happier living in this house than I've, I've, I've lived anywhere else. And all my neighbours are beautiful, wonderful people and we all get along fabulously. And we all have these wonderful views. Well, obviously, the people down at the bottom don't, yeah? They just view the bins um, <laughs> straight across the bins. Yeah. There's a long story I could tell about that. No, thanks. But I won't. Right. No, exactly, yeah. Right. But let's try and leave one another on, 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 on a more positive note and just agree that, 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 that we, we are living under the worst administration of all time. Worst administration of all, of all time, bar none. Well, they, there you are. You see, a, a note of happiness on the end there. <laughs> Glad to talk to you, Ben. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Worst administration ever, Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Kieran and Mason says, um, I heard the other day that Ukraine would like to join the EU. Do you think that Bodger is going to help them get it done? <laughs> yeah. Um, Karen emails. I first she says, mmm, and then I love fish finger and cheese sandwiches with loads of butter and a little ketchup. Oh, I think we're straying into weird territory now. Cheese and fish fingers. Well, first of all, cheese and fish is not really a thing, is it? You're not supposed to put cheese on fish. I don't know why, but it's uh, like, you know, it's Italians. Italians have said so. Absolutely. So, you know, that's that. Kate emails, you just reminded me, Nick, every time I give a homeless person a pound, brackets, I'm very poor, so it doesn't happen often. I win something on the lottery, says Kale. <laughs> uh, huh. I seriously doubt that, Kay. Every time you give a person who is homeless a pound, you win something on the lottery. What, it makes you happier, you mean? 
You mean life's lottery or the lottery? Um, I didn't win uh, 130 million pounds, uh, by the way, uh, last week. I actually went out of my way to buy a ticket to that blooming uh, Euro, what's it? And I didn't win 130 blooming pounds. Damn it! How many tickets do you have to buy before you win 130 million pounds, by the way? I'm not upset, I'm just disappointed. Newport, hello, Claire. Hiya. Claire. Hello. Yes, Claire. Well, I've got two things to go with here. I hope you're ready for it. Well, I'm preparing myself then... as we speak. Ah, hang on, hang on, know. hang on. Wait, 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 wait. OK, okay. I'm, ready. I'm ready now. Go ahead. OK, well, I, I'm going to say I've just been on my Twitter feed and watching what um, uh, the Tories... No, sorry, the Conservatives have been saying from 2010... 129,998 food bank users. Uh, by 2012, 326,450 users. Bojo doesn't know the price of a loaf of bread, but he knows the price of a bottle of champagne. By 2021, we got two points. 110 million users in our food banks, and Bojo still does not know what a price of bread is. Now, on, on what basis do people say that he doesn't know how much a, a blow? I mean, I'm not s disputing it, but how do people know that he doesn't know how much bread costs? Because he said it. Have a oh, look right. at it. Have a look at it on um, Boris Johnson's feed on Twitter. Right, I absolutely will not do that. <laughs> well, but that's how I know it, and I'm ashamed to say I buy. Uh, teacher for 15 years, then residential childcare officer for my sins right now. And I am not uh, ashamed to say I buy the yellow sticker. But what i got to say to the lady, was it Rose or Rosemary? Yeah. I worked in, I worked at Christ the King Roman Catholic School in Amesbury from 2004 to 2011. And it was the most expensive place I ever worked. And, um, what, the school? I was actually, what you, hang I was, on, wait, 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 back up. What do you mean a school was an expensive place? No, 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 at Salisbury, Amesbury. Oh, right. The most expensive place I've ever lived. I, I come see. from Newport, as you said. That's, that's my... Right. Yeah. Is my place was born and fed mm -hmm. and bred. <laughs> and this lady now, was it Rose or Rosemary Avin, that she has watched somebody being spit on? Yeah, not sure about that part, but um, well, how much? Well, well, let, let me, let Claire, let me, let me ask you this: How much is a loaf yes. of bread? For me, ten pence at the end of the day with a yellow sticker. Ten pounds. You, ten pence. <laughs> ten pence. Because you, do you know what I do? Right. T apparently, ten pounds. Bread is ten, ten pound. Pence. Ten pound a ten loaf pence. in. Ten pounds. You're saying ten, ten pounds. Pence. Yeah, ten pounds a loaf. You're saying in uh, in Newport. I can't believe that, Claire. Ten pence. You're so saying I put my money ten pounds. And I put it into the Morrisons, buy a bag and right. put it in the food bank trolley. Yeah. But I have to say, I'm shamed. And it's, and it's shameful and it's, it, it, that Rose right. or, or Rose Marie said that she watched yeah. a homeless person being right. spat on. Yeah, yeah, I didn't are. actually intervene. Right. Well, Speaking you don't don't intervene. Don't intervene. Warning! Warning! I mean, you can tut. But don't actually intervene. But I can't believe Claire that uh, even in the in like the remainder bin, with the goods that are going out of date, a, a loaf of bread in Newport is ten pounds. Ten pence. Ten pounds. Ten yeah, pence. it's ten pounds. It's just um, ah. I, I find that hard to believe. But if you say so, Claire, ten pounds for a loaf of bread in uh, Newport. Wow, that's the most expensive place I've uh, ever heard in my life to live. Presumably, other things aren't quite as expensive. Thanks a lot for the bad news there, Claire. Another excellent reason not to go to Newport. 0345 6060973. Well, the thing is, a loaf of bread costs, it can cost anything. It can actually cost £10. Or it can cost 10p. It's less like milk. Milk's sort of like milk. Doesn't really matter where you buy milk. It's more or less the same. It's like 180, 190 for one of those big four pint jugs. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello. Where are the 
whole world's gone crazy. Yeah, that must have been a tough choice for Gareth Bale. Cardiff, Los Angeles, very, very tough choice. 0345 6060 973. I mean, get rained on 24 hours a day, 365 days uh, a year. Or be under the sunny California sunshine. <laughs> While surrounded by uh, millionaires and billionaires and, uh, you know, uh, uh, hot Californian babes. Very, very difficult choice, I'm sure. He was up all night fretting about that, I bet. Uh, This says, uh, Nick, what about a tuna melt? Does that not have cheese on it? Well, that is a good point. Um, Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Tuna melt does have cheese on it, yes. So fish and cheese uh, do go. As I've always said, I've always said that. Charlie in Glasgow says, I think the Welsh lady was saying that the uh, remainder bread was £10 a loaf. (laughs) He he didn't write that. He said 10p a loaf. Yeah, I know that, Charlie. It was, uh, you know, I was just amusing myself. I'm sitting here amusing myself. Disgusting. (laughs) This says, um, a packet of fish fingers was £7.50 at my local supermarket today. He didn't, he's actually, this may, this may be a typo, I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I come to the end of the uh, message. But it, it actually says, a packet of fish gingers was £7.50 at my local supermarket today. Also, my mother-in-law freezes her bread and has to waft it after it's defrosted, much to my entertainment. What does that mean? Waft it? What does that mean? Chris says a chorizo sandwich on white bread with cheese and Frank's hot sauce. You can thank me later. No way. You can thank me now. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. That doesn't sound very nice at all. Chorizo. It's a bit too hard for a sandwich, isn't it? What, that sort of concentrated cheese that is uh, comes in a little sausage? Nah, you want something a bit more... Um, that's expanded a bit more, like ham or, or something like that. Chorizo, every mouthful would be like concrete. It's a no from me. Let's have a call from Peckham. Hello, Sean. Hello. Hello, Sean, Sean here. Yes, sir. Hello. I live, in, I live in the world, the real world, like you do. You live in the real world. Groovy. I believe so. Well, I know so, yeah. I live, I'm in a psychiatric hospital, uh, forced to take... Arapruzole, which represses your sexual drive. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot, uh, Sean. Probably not the right show for that. Appreciate it anyway. Lorcan emails, just caught up with last night's show and was thinking, do you not like the drum solo on Abbey Road? Is it worth it? Is what worth it? Oh, you mean, is it worth having a drum solo in Abbey Road? I can't remember the drum solo on Abbey Road. Now, when I'm talking about a drum solo, I don't just mean like a couple of, you know, knocks on a drum i'm talking about minutes i'm talking about five minute 10 20 minute drum solos not just a break anyway you know the one near the end no i do not know the one near the end Lorcan. i'd have to play it to remind myself also i may have missed it but i haven't i, I haven't heard your opinion on the beatles disney documentary yet what was your verdict if you're talking about the one which, which was uh the apple I can't remember what they called it now. The, the Apple Sessions, something like that, which was um, it was about nine hours worth of film done by that fellow that did Lord of the Rings. And I thought it was absolutely riveting. I watched the whole thing. It was like being in the studio with them. I don't know what they did to the visuals, but it actually made it feel like you were in the room. It, it seemed to be three-dimensional. And it was just great. And they didn't seem to be doing anything. I mean, if I remind, remind, remember back at what happened during those nine hours, well, not much, really. I mean, I, it took about as long to watch as the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. And almost nothing happened, but it was great. And it gave me a, a renewed um, appreciation, really, of the Beatles. So I'd always, you know, up to this point thought, well, they've got some nice songs, but... Really? It's like a bit of a fuss about just a band. But having watched that and come through the other side and watched them sort of go through the process of writing those songs that made the whole world sing, uh, I I came out the other side and thought, wow, actually, this it really was something special. It was very, 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 very good. 
the Disney documentary on the Beatles. If that's what you're talking about, that nine hours worth of uh, like studio filming, then uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, Mike says, talking of fish and cheese, what's wrong with seafood pizza? Absolutely nothing, Mike. I take back that whole t- cheese and fish thing. But you're not supposed to put cheese on fish. I thought that was a thing with Italian food. That if it's a seafood pizza, then you don't put cheese on it. You have, um, you know, like, uh, like a red sauce. But no cheese. I thought that was a rule. Not my rule. Their rule. Italians rule. Absolutely. Uh, Pauline says, the yellow, stu- the yellow sticker stuff is great. Never liked coleslaw. Refused to taste it or buy it until I spotted the yellow sticker shelf. 19p, I thought. Is it money down the drain? Coleslaw is now one of my favourite foods. I thoroughly recommend yellow sticker stuff as a tasting exercise for stuff you never knew you liked. How can you not like coleslaw? It's just uh, it, it's just crunchy mayonnaise. Mmm. Mm. And the more mayonnaise, the better. Uh, Port Talbot, William. Hello. Yes, sir. I I just wanted you didn't tell me where that woman was getting ten pound bread. That's cheap. <laughs> cheap. Yeah, in Port Talbot it's twelve quid. Is it? Yeah. What do you yeah. get for twelve quid? Well, well, it's whole meal, see, because you can't uh, eat white bread in Port Talbot. You're not allowed. No, it goes grey before you get it on your plate because of the soot. Because of the soot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that said, yeah, it tastes better. Mm. I would recommend soot. A- anyway, beside the point, yeah. if you could tell me where she's getting this bread for ten quid a shot, I'd love to know. Right, you'd be right at, right right around there, forming an orderly queue. Well, I've got about half a gallon of car, uh, petrol in the car at the moment, mm. which would m- maybe get me as far as car if I did check the rest of the way. It'll probably yeah. get probably get you to the end of your drive. Uh, yeah, but the point is, if I could get six of them cheap loaves, yeah, I could share them among, amongst the family. Well, that's very generous of you, uh, William. So yeah, yeah. So if you can um, find out exactly where she's buying this bread, yeah. I'll be around first thing in the morning. Thank you very much. Leave it with me. Uh, public service. Yeah, leave it with me, William. I'll uh, have a full report on your desk first thing. That soot sounds nice. I could do with a couple of pints of soot right now, as a matter of fact. Thanks a lot, William. Appreciate it. Anne has texted to ask, do you like the butter on the untoasted side? Oh, no, that's disgusting. It's a long while since I've done this, but um, there's just something very, very extra special about putting about toasting bread only on one side. Don't ask me why. It's just a fact. Nina says, uh, for months and months, in fact, nearly a year, my texts to LBC have been ignored. I could not understand what I might have said to be so callously treated. And then last night I realised that I've been using... <laughs> I've been using the wrong text number. Oh, no. The text meant for LBC were going to some other radio station. I'll now have to start randomly sending all the messages that you've missed out on. No, that's okay, Nina. Don't bother. Not on my account. But I do appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lorcan says, just caught up a line. Oh, no, read that one. I'm getting way ahead of schedule now. I'm really starting to catch up. Only five pages of closely typed um, messages to get through. I'm never going to do it. Lucas in Twickenham says, watch Whiplash and tell me that drum solos are boring. I have watched Whiplash and I'm telling you that drum solos are boring. And I didn't like Whiplash at all. I'll never watch that film again. It was awful. I mean, I'm not saying it was a bad film. It was a good film. It's just that everybody in it was horrible, particularly the main character. And as you are spending time with that person while you're watching the film, well, it's, it's just a, an absolute no from me. I mean, he was totally irredeemable. I mean, it was a film about torture, basically. It was horrible. And it was a lot of, um, a lot of drum solos. Boring! Couldn't be more dull. Guitar solos, on the other hand. Craig in uh, Burton, from Burton, says, Sean... 
could have been just about to impart some pearls of wisdom, get him back on. Well, I've got no idea who Sean was, but um, <laughs> it's a no from me. No. No. And furthermore. No, 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 no. I mean, apart from anything else, you can only call once. You can only call once, not twice. This email says, I love my robot vacuum cleaner. Affirmative. <laughs> and, and it absolutely will not... Um, oh, I've forgotten what the quote is. And it absolutely will not uh, give up ever. Something like that. Polymetal alloy. Greg emails, the longest title is, If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? By the Bellamy Brothers, it has 13, 14 words. Yeah, most of them are quite short, though. I wonder if that is actually the ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have fallen in love with. That's got 13 words, but m most of them are bigger than... Well, I don't know. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? So, uh, asks the uh, Bellamy brothers. Carol? No! It's a no from Carol. And this says, Glastonbury is on the telly. Seems to be all up-and-coming acts. I don't know any of them. But the the Beatles are on at ten thirty. I know them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. Tottenham. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. Uh, Wire had unbelievably short songs. Less than a minute. <laughs> it's crazy. Wire. But Wire. They're a great band. It's a great name. Wire. Yeah. It's a great band. But the drum solo. Well, I, don't, I know you don't like homework, but no. um, rhythming, it's, or it's rhythming, but it's like, I just say rhythming. It's Thelonious Monk, and I think it's Frankie Dunlop playing the drums, and he plays the entire 32 bars, but it's absolutely br brilliant. It's rhythming, rhythming, Thelonious Monk. Rhythming. Charlie Rouse. Do, 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 do. Rhythming. Do, do, do. <laughs> it's a do ba. Okay, you have to stop doing Other that. Other tunes are available. Yeah. Okay, you're, the re original reason I rang in, which was hours ago, but the telephone is breaking my head. It, 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 it does fry your brains. Not as bad as the alcohol. But, uh, <laughs> was the, was yeah, the, the telephone is frying your mind. Yowza. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, work, I'm trying. I'm keep trying, it, I'm keep trying. the phone away from your head and the booze yes. too. Booze. As a matter yes, of fact. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that's the only thing I'm using. Thank God for that. Uh, they don't, they don't, they, they, when you fly on the jet plane, hmm. you're going at 500. The fast jet pilots are doing 1500. <laughs> okay. I silly. All right. You were cooking last night. You are cooking. You are brilliant. Good night, Nick. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was going to talk about fish fingers cooking, but he means I'm, uh, I'm getting it done. Yowza. Cooking. Cooking with gas. Thelonious Monk. Yeah, no, no. All that uh, freeform. And I'm not really uh, keen on freeform. Although there is a trick to uh, listening to freeform jazz. Now, I know it turns people off. But the trick is, there's usually one person in the band who is keeping it stable, who is, who is providing an anchor. It's often the drummer or the bass player. If you just hear through the noise and you concentrate on them, then the rest of the, uh, the, the other band members who are just going all over the place, it sort of swirls around you. But you have an anchor by listening to the drummer or usually the bass player. Occasionally, every single member of the band is doing their own thing, and in which case you're on your own. You're you're floating in uh, you're floating in the air, and there is um, no direction home. But that is a trick. It, in fact, it's an educational um, moment in this program. Can you believe that? No. Actual help, assistance, which is more assistance than uh, you'll get on. Um, uh, what's your problem with me and Carol? Hey, Carol. Yeah. Oh, a short pause, and then... Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Everything is going extremely well. You bet your life it is. Frank in Darwin says, Good evening, Nick. I've played drums for 56 years, and drum solos are boring. <laughs> See? An expert. Uh, Mike says, Bodger is making the most of it. 
going to Germany for the G7. Another two years of this regime and we'll be lucky to be in the G47. <laughs> yeah, we'll get relegated. Uh, Port Talbot. Hello, Joe. Hello, Nick. Yes, Good Joe. Good morning. Well, I, I had originally called to speak about uh, the state of bread in Port Talbot, but uh, I think I'd rather talk to you about music, if that's okay. Radio. <laughs> I'm actually... Um, Kind of talking about drummers and bass players. I'm a bass player myself. I'm just driving back from. Well, I have been driving back from a gig that we played tonight, and I just pulled it pulled in to ring in. How was the gig? It wasn't too bad. It was um, we playing at this, uh, this pub in Brynamon, which uh, it's, it's it's a bikers place. But uh, uh -oh. they, they they had a couple of bikes in the pub, but no actual bikers there this evening. So I don't know where they are. They had bikes but, in the pub. Yeah. They had, Two motorbikes in the pub, but no actual bikers there tonight. At least, the, so it seemed. Right. How did the bike? How did the bikes get in there? <laughs> well, they were carried in, presumably. Oh, I see. They're part of the <laughs> of the decor. Yeah, yeah. Right. I get There's it. One, okay. there, was, there was one suspended on, on the wall behind the drum kit. Oh, I see. Right. What kind of a bike? And Please don't say was, Harley uh, Davidson. No, it wasn't. It was um, more of a sports bike, actually. I, I right. can't remember exactly what okay. it was. It was. Uh, uh, it was about a 500 cc something oh, uh, to, something I mean, zippy but, right yeah it looks they're much zippier than a harley they're, they're, you know they're like two wheel tractors a lot of them <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they haven't they, they they might be okay for america you know where they've got those big long wide open roads but not for this country because i don't think they've actually made one that can turn corners yet have they well i'm not sure i mean you see a few around occasionally, but I think the ones that you see in this country tend to be, um, you know, I think the guys spend more time polishing them than, mm. than riding them in many yeah. cases. Well, they, uh, as soon as they've um, uh, stopped work for the week at their accountancy firm, then <laughs> they, get the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they get the dusters out and start rubbing them. Yeah. Of course, you yeah, can hear yeah. them before you see them. Why do they make so much noise? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you tell me. Uh, because uh, people like to make a racket when they go about the place. Look at me, they say. Yeah. There was an episode in South Park, actually, with... Uh, yeah, I know, I remember that. Yeah. Along those lines, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But, um, and we, yeah. We can't it's... get into that on this show. <laughs> it's OK for television, but not radio. Well, let's, let's go back to Whiplash. I mean, um, I've not seen the whole film, personally, but there's uh, a, vid a, a review video on YouTube. Uh, do you mind if I name the channel? Yeah, go on. It's, um, it's, a, it's a guy called Adam Neely, who's um, a professional musician in New York, a bass player. But mm. uh, he did an analysis of the film, and um, his conclusion was that it's, it's much more of a sports film than a music film. Kind of, I don't yeah. know if you I get, No, yeah. I get that, yeah. But I just didn't like the people in the film. I mean, the, the main character, the teacher, was a horrible, horrible person. And he was on screen mm. almost all the time. And so I was spending like a couple of hours in the company of someone I just absolutely hated. And I'm not going to put myself through that again. Oh, no, absolutely. He had no redeeming qualities whatsoever. And I, oh. I can't really say much more without giving it away. But um, it, I don't, I'm not disputing that it was a good film. I just didn't like watching it. No. Well, the, 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 I mean, it's, it, it doesn't resemble any kind of situation that I've ever been in as a musician with having... Um, you know, having a band leader or a musical director. Yeah. Who is a bully. Uh, he's, a, he's a bully, basically. Well, yeah, he's just a bully. Exactly. A bully who gets away with it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, how did the... Uh, how did, like, this evening, did you go... Ba -boom, boom, 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 or did you go... Ba -boom, boom, 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 boom? Uh, both in places. Both, and the right. times I went... Boom, 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 oh, was required, no, really. no, no. You, you, don't, you don't want to do that. You want, you want to take that right out of the act. That's what's holding so, you back, Joe. Uh, well, you know, it's like I said earlier. Sometimes, you know, the uh, sometimes it's the bass player that's got to hold everything else together. Yeah. And uh, so at times it's me. There's only three of us in the band, so it's uh, I, some, sometimes I get uh, the Noel Redding job. Right, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Not not the Jimi Hendrix job. The Noel Redding job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Uh, Keith in Totner says Roy Chubby Brown did a song on From Inside the Helmet <laughs> called How Can I Tell You I can't say that <laughs> and, 
Next, uh, this says, uh, all these callers calling in with delicious recipes for fish finger sandwiches with cheese, with cheese, nasty. I think that's what how you're supposed to read that. Uh, they need to, to be thanking Jacob Rees Moore because he said because of Brexit we have managed to keep the price of fish fingers down. So it's a Brexit bonus. Oh. So says Jacob Rees Mogg. Ain't that right? I don't know anything. But he doesn't know anything. So what does he know? I don't know anything. Let's have um, Islington. Hello, Noel. Hello. No. Yes. Yes, Noel. Um, you know, you keep talking about long titles, isn't it? Yes. Um, the song of music, Super California or something, Fred. Super, <laughs> Super, Super, Super California, uh, yeah. Um, expiala, fragilistic expialidocious. Yeah. Taking, yeah? Dr- taking, Super California, taking drugs fries my mind. Groovy. Something like that. Super California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how, 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 are you spelling, how are you spelling that, Noel? Super, yeah, fragilistic, mm-hmm. expialidocious. Right. No, close, but uh, no cigar on on, on this uh, this time. But better luck next time, Noel. Thanks for playing. You get nothing. Good day, sir. John says tonight I I had southern fried monkfish at a Gordon Ramsay restaurant in Chelsea. It was. <laughs> It was like KFC skin wrapped around the fish. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever tasted, says John. Well, it doesn't sound like something I'd order, but okay then. Mike says, Bodge is making the most of it going to... Ju- oh, no, I read that. George says, Boris has had his hair cut. Doesn't he look smart? <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, CSNN song, Almost Cut My Hair. Crosby, Stills, Nash. Almost cut my hair. It happened just the other day. Great song. Um, was that, who wrote that? Was it Was it Nash wrote that? I think it was... Um, was it Graham? I, it might, yeah, I think it was Nash wrote that song. It doesn't really matter, does it? Who cares? It's a song. It's been written already. Who cares who wrote it? This says, Nick, I'm in love with a girl on a certain Manchester megastore checkout desk. <laughs> really? Well, go buy something from her. Say, hey, baby, what's um, a hot person like you doing in a place like this? Or, I don't know. <laughs> They'll be redoubling security. Um, Sutton. Hello, Simon. Nick, good evening. How yes, are you, sir? sir? I'm a huge fan. Thanks. Just, uh, just, uh, but I think of drum solos. I think of three words: the John Heisman. Who's that? John Heisman, Coliseum, paraphernalia. From the sixties to his untimely death in two thousand and eighteen, the best drum solos you'll ever hear. Right. I don't want to hear a drum solo. But he, you, he'll he'll change your mind. No, he he won't. He would, well, is, let me well let me ask you this, Simon: Is it a drum solo? It's it's a, well, I'm a professional musician, and he makes the drums sound like an instrument, a right. toned instrument. Yeah, but is it a drum solo? It's more than that. But but is it him playing the drums solo? Uh, it's more than that because he actually becomes an orchestra. <laughs> He becomes a fully fledged orchestra in his own right. Right. And I say that as a conductor and as a violinist. Right. It's not like nothing you'll ever hear, Nick. Right. Well, Check him out, John well, Heisman. I, 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 I can do. Be, I can do better than that. It, it's not nothing. It's not like nothing I'll ever hear. It's like something I won't hear. I I don't <laughs> want to, and you can't make You're me. You're missing out, Nick. You're missing out. He's, is he's it, a genius. Is it a man who bangs the drums with sticks? No, it's a man who melts our hearts with music. Not from the drum uh, kit, he doesn't. <laughs> he does. He does. Listen, it's brilliant. I certainly He's will do. He's ultimate, the ultimate musician we'll ever come nothing across. Nothing of the sort. It's a no from me. No, 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 no. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks anyway, Nick. All Good right. Night. Cheers, Simon. Uh, conduct this. 0345 973 Um, I should remind you that this program does get squirted up the internet as a podcast. Almost the moment is finished. 
We take the news and the ads out, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity. And when your fuel bill comes in this winter, you still won't be able to afford it. But every little helps. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. It's called Nick Abbott of The Whole Show. It's on Global Player. <gasps> have you got Global Player? Well, you absolutely should have it in your life. It's um, got all the radio stations that we do. I'll, I'll, I'll enumerate them. I'll enumerate them for you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or more. Who knows? This is LBC with Nick Abbott. He's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a good person. Thanks, Donnie. You're the best. 0345 6060 973. Clive texts, Hi, Nick. Went to uh, Brighton and ventured onto the pier today. I ended up spending about £30 on the grabber machine where you have to try to pick up a toy with a grabber. I realise it's designed so that you can never win. <laughs> well, that you can never win, Clive. I'm sure people have won. He says, I could probably have bought 10 of the toys with the 30 quid, which made it even worse. Oh, but the fun you had doing it, though, yes? No. Archie and Inverness says, uh, when Inverness Kaylee Thistle whooped uh, Celtic at football... The famous newspaper headline the next day was Super Kaylee Go Ballistic Celtic are Atrocious. <laughs> That's very good. Best headline ever. <laughs> huh. 0345 6060 973. Walton on Thames. Hello, Will. Oh, hi, Nick. Will. I listen to your show a lot, especially when I'm driving back from uh, playing live as a drummer. Ah. Um, and I love your Arnold Schwarzenegger samples the most. But? Um, but, yeah, I do have to defend drum solos a bit, but I I will say on behalf of all drummers, Whiplash is rubbish. Um, it probably represents drums as badly as the Rocky films represent boxing. It's ridiculous. Well, I've never seen a Rocky film, so I can't really say. But I have oh, seen yeah. Whiplash. I'd say it's a good film. I don't. I've, I've never picked up a drumstick in my life, so I don't know about that. But it's a good film. I just didn't like it. Oh, it, it really wound me up. And every drummer I know is just like, oh, God, it's terrible. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, you're not alone in not liking drum solos. Most musicians in the band don't like drum solos and don't want to give us a solo. Um, no. It's a regular thing. We're like, oh, God. If the drummer's asking for a solo, tell them to shut up or go to the bar while they play for 15 minutes. Yeah, but that's the thing is, it's not the band, because I, I can understand why members of the band would want to go off and, uh, you know, overdose backstage or whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is they do back there. But, yeah. um, you know, give them a bit of time off to wipe their brow and, uh, you know, f um, f have a, a, a little light philandering. Disgusting. While the, while the drummer goes on. It's not the band, it's the audience that can't stand it. Oh, that's not true. I, I just did a gig tonight where one of our regular songs is um, Call Me Out by Paul Simon, and the piano player gives me a solo, and the audience usually love it. So, mm. yeah. Well, <laughs> Trust if, me. if you say so. Ah, uh, it's true. Do you Especially ever, if you make it so they can dance to you still. Do you ever get yeah. asked back to the same place? Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good to talk to you, Will. Thanks a lot, mate. Uh, that's me corrected. Yes? No. Oh. 0345 This says, uh, the PM thinks uh, maybe thinks that a Peppa Pig treehouse will distract us from the old chestnut that he is no longer popular. <gasps> Oh, another listener with tree material. Oh, no. This one says, uh, I just switched on my robot vacuum cleaner downstairs. It'll be done in an hour whilst I'm in bed. Affirmative. <laughs> um, it's not one of those ones with lasers in it, is it? <coughs> You'll never be able to go downstairs again. Graham says, my favourite bass solo is John Entwistle playing My Generation The Who. Tell me a better bass solo. Hmm. He was a very good bass player, but there is one. Oh, it's not coming to mind, but there is a really, really great bass solo in a very, very famous song. Oh, uh, the Rizillos. The guy who played bass in the Rizillos, whose name I can't remember, 
It was uh, Faye Five up front and Eugene Reynolds. Oh, I bet I got that right. I just pulled that out of the air from 1977. The bass player at the start of... Um, not My Baby Does Good Sculptures. It was... Oh, I can't remember what it was called. The big hit from the Rosillos. Well, when I say big hit. Not Top of the Pops, the other one. Can't remember. Anyway, it starts off with this great bass line. I'm not saying it's the great, the, the greatest bass solo in history. I mean, you'd think that that would be um, uh, uh, Charles Mingus, somebody of that ilk. Whereas John Entwistle, well, he might have been good in the context of The Who, but, you know, more than that, I don't know. Plus, was any was anybody who went to a Who gig looking at John M. Whistle? No, <laughs> not really. No. Oh, th- but you know that's that was his role. It's like I said before about um, listening to freeform jazz. If you can if you can find the me- the member of the band that is playing, you know, the rhythm that is not going all over the place, then concentrate on them, and then the rest of the sound just swirls around you. Whereas if you try to grab this like swirling mess without the anchor of one person actually sticking to the tune and the beat, then you're, the, the people are at a loss. They don't get it. And then they say, I don't like jazz. Don't say I don't like jazz. That's like saying I don't like music. Try a little bit and it will reward you greatly. Oh. And you can thank me later. No, wait. I've changed my mind. Thank- you. Let's have um, Waybridge. Hello, Adrian. Good morning, Nick. Yes, sir. I believe it's uh, the longest song in the world is I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back at her. I hope you've got a lot of ink in your pen. <laughs> Who was that? Dr. Feelgood. Oh, I don't know that song. I mean, I saw Dr. Feelgood live. It was, one, it was one of the hottest places I've ever been in my life. The sweat was... It was, it was like waterfalls down the wall. It was so hot. That was in uh, Edinburgh. But um, blimey. And, and that was the, the tour that they recorded their live album called Stupidity. I can't believe I'm, I'm coming up with all this ancient old uh, music stuff. I can't remember what I did last week. And I can remember the title of a live album by Dr. Feelgood that I haven't listened to in... Well, what year is it? 50 years. 50? Something like that. I can remember listening to it on Radio Caroline in the 70s. Oh, yeah. It was an album track. And what was the name of it again? I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back at her. Huh. Well, I'll have to look that one up. Thanks for the swerve, Adrian. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Cheers, mate. Tell her. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Yeah, I remember um, listening to uh, Radio Caroline. Ding ding. From a point at sea to the circles of your mind. Loving awareness. L A and D A. That was that's what they were all about. Yeah, it's about the mid nineteen seventies. Uh, kids uh, won't have any concept of this. You don't know. You're born kids. We used to listen to the radio with one earphone, one earpiece in, not stereo, mono. And it would it would come and go, you know, dependent on uh, on the wind. You could pick it up better at night than you could during the day. And if there was a storm somewhere, you know, in the the northern uh, uh, part of the planet, the, the northern hemisphere is what I was going for. Then it wouldn't come in at all, you know, or it would come in really loudly, or you just never knew what you were going to get. And I heard um, him playing a track that was, you know, by the celebrated artists' band or one of those acts that was, uh, you know, briefly flickered in the 1970s. And the track came to an end, and then there was silence. And I'm listening, and I'm listening, and I'm listening, and nothing was happening. And, you know, silence in radio, just any amount of silence, seems like, uh, uh, seems echoing. It seems like you're falling into a cavern, doesn't it? I mean, if I, I mean, I know I throw in some silences every now and again, but this is just me trying to collect collect my thought. But it sounds like a long time when you're silent, right? But this this thing went on forever. A minute went by. (laughs) And then it was like, 
oh. He came back on the mic and said, oh, yeah, so, sorry about that. I, I just fell off my stool. <laughs> right. 0345 West Kensington. Hello, Jane. Hello. Jane. Hello, darling. How are you? I am great, mate. Good. Um, now, listen, we're about the same age, roughly. You're a little bit younger than me. A little bit younger than you. Yeah, just a little bit. Do you remember Buddy Rich? Yeah, I know Buddy Rich. Well, well, I bought one of his records when he came out in the 60s. Yeah. Let There Be Drums. Right. Did you did you get that one? No, I did not. You should have. It was brilliant. Should have, would have, could have. Yeah, he was really great. He was a legend. Well, he was. Yeah, I still I still don't want to hear him it, doing it a drum really solo. Good. You know, you know, you were saying how boring you found drums. No, drums. not drums. Drum solos. Well, that's what it was. It was him all the way through. Oh, painful. For about three minutes. Oh, but he God. was so good that um, it was really wonderful. No, 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 no. No. Oh, oh well, I thought I'd give it a try. Well, anyway. when was the last time you listened to that album, Jane? Hmm? When was the last time you listened to it that album? It wasn't an album, it was a, a, a 45. Oh, well, when was the last time you listened to that single? Well, years ago. Exactly. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday, Yeah, you know? but you haven't been, um, you haven't had the urge to put it on, though, lately, have you? Well, I haven't got it. How can I put it on if I haven't got it? Where did it go? Oh, I lost a lot of things through oh, my life, you right. know. I've had a, a very interesting past. If you ever need something, if you're ever in want of something, just follow Jane from West Kensington around because she, she leaves this trail of detritus behind her, including some really good uh, singles, by the way. I think you'll love it. OK. All right, thanks a lot, Jane. 0345 6060973. Mike emails, thinking back to the Johnson interview this morning, he said both that he was going to learn lessons from the by-election losses and also that there was no way he was going to change his attitude to governing. Only conclusion being that the losses weren't his fault and that he is already perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He said, um, you have to look at the wider issues affecting people, such as the cost of living crisis, stemming from supply chain issues and the war in, Ukra in Ukraine as the root cause for the by-election losses. In other words, it weren't me. I ain't done nothing. He says, people are sending a message and we have to respond. Yeah. <laughs> people are sending a message all right and it's bye bye and he's responding by saying hello johnson said times are tough but the government has the right program to deal with the situation <laughs> what program what program is it you're talking about bodge is it the one where you say that you want a high wage economy and then you call anyone asking for a pay rise an enemy of the people? Um. Is that the plan you've got? God, an absolute shower. Just clinging on to power at any cost. The entire purpose of the government now is to keep that man in the job that he has always dreamt of doing. Despite the fact that the, gov that the country is saying... Thank you, Bodge. You have delighted us enough. 0345 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running late. Uh, the clock's just gone off in the studios. Has the clock gone off and where, where you are in there? No, we're good. Uh, well, you are, but that's okay, but I'm not. And as I am running the uh, programme, I think we're all in big trouble. Huge. Oh, no. Uh, oh, there it is. It's back. <laughs> it's back. It's, it's, it's not an actual clock. It's an image of a clock. It's on a TV screen. See, if we had an actual clock, then it wouldn't disappear if you unplugged it. But it just went, I've never seen it go away before, but it just was a blank, a blank screen there for a moment. I, I was like momentarily concerned because it's the only way in which I know that my, my time's up and I can go and that Clyde Bull's uh, up. And I was wondering, how am I going to figure that out? Because I'll just like guesswork because there is no other clock in here. 
Not that I'm uh, worrying about it or anything. <coughs> but I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, eat into Clive's time. 0345 6060 973. Everything is under control. Don't worry about a thing. Stains. Ugh. Daniel. Yeah, hi, Nick. Daniel. Nick, you're talking about drum solos, right? Okay. I thought you were talking about bass solos, so uh, I might have got the wrong uh, topic here. But you know uh, Ian Dewey and yes. the Blockhead? Mm -hmm. They had a guy called uh, Norman Watroy. Norman Watroy, yeah. And, uh, you know, the best the best guy. Done the best bass solos ever. Well, they were a fantastic band. And, uh, you know, he's so underrated as well, you know. I'm surprised you know who he is. Are you kidding? I saw Ian Jury many times. Oh, you're a lucky man. Lucky man. He was the I, if I had to actually name it, name one person, I would have to say that he was the best live act I ever saw. Really? Yeah. Wow, well. Hey, Nick, what was going on last night? I've got no idea, Daniel. <laughs> don't ask me, I just work here. What was going on last night? I don't know what you're talking about. We'll never know. I'm just getting a, a you know, a, like a gut feeling. Warning, warning. <laughs> I'm going with my gut. Bernadette email, or Bernadette rather, Bernadette. Bernadette, Bernadette, Bernadette. Bernadette emails, we used to have a robot vacuum cleaner, we called him Paddy. At times he would try to make a break for it out the front door. Sometimes he would get tangled up in blankets or wires. It would take ages to untangle him, but he was totally awesome. Affirmative. A robot vacuum cleaner. Uh, Rick says, I really enjoy watching deeply flawed, disturbed and dysfunctional psychotics in movies. I just don't want them running the country. He doesn't want you running the country, Bodge. I think he's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. Ignorant, Rick. Tessa says, I remember my grandfather asking me uh, what music I'd been listening to around 20 years ago. When I said jazz, he said, good Lord, jazz? That's not music. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stevenage. Hello, Pat. Oh, Hi, Pat. Nick. Yes, Pat. Hello. Hi, Nick. Normally I uh, send in daft tweets, but I had to call when you were talking about the free jazz thing. Yes. Well, um, strictly speaking, it's, it wasn't actually free jazz. What happened was I was um, 18. And my uncle owned, well, he worked in a TV shop in Morrison Street in Edinburgh mm. and uh, next to the Haymarket. Oh, yeah. And the guy that owned the premises, I was told, um, played stand-up bass. And every week they had a jam session in a pub opposite the place, you know, and I should go. Mm -hmm. so, so I was 18 and thought, well, yeah, I've got to go. So I... He called a mate of mine, and both of us, both of us went completely nervous. And uh, uh, him and uh, this piano player were playing away. They on uh, this huge stand-up bass, and it was all over the place. And uh, I was looking at my mate, and I'm thinking, "Oh my God, we we are sort of of depth here. I don't know. He's playing some sort of jazz. I don't know what he's doing at mm -hmm. all. Because our thing was like." Hendrix, yeah. maybe Zeppelin, and rock and fun. roll, rock and roll, absolutely. And uh, after a few numbers, we were kind of lost. So I plucked up the courage and I said, I, "I'm sorry, you know, what key is that you're in?" <laughs> and he goes, uh, "Oh, we're playing in C." And I thought, "No, you're not." <laughs> and what actually turned out, the reality was, this bloke didn't have a clue what he was doing. And he was throwing his huge hands at the neck of the bass anywhere and just kind of thumping <laughs> along. Right. Well, that sounds <laughs> so, like jazz to me. Oh, I'll tell you what. And then, but so once we twigged that, we just carried on and played our, our usual sort of blues and rock and roll jams. Mm. And we had a whale of a time. And it turned out to be a great night. But and later on, he told uh, he, a thing that he, that he did. Uh, uh, I was mystified. He sort of squatted down a bit behind his bass and looked through the strings towards the fluorescent light. And I'd never seen this before. And I said, "Sorry, what are you doing?" He says, well, "I'm tuning the bass." I says, "You're tuning it." 
He goes, yeah, the strobe effect for the fluorescent light interacts with the string in a continuum like that. I thought, wow. wow <laughs> that explains a thing or two. Yeah, I, I, I guess it does, yeah. You were nervous and he was blutered. <laughs> It was a bit. Yeah. All right, Th- thanks. Didn't drink at that time, but right. wow. All right. Okay, thanks a lot, Pat. Cheers, mate. 0345 6060973. Brian tweets In the 1970s, I worked in a music venue in Seattle. Buddy Rich was highlighting that night, but I didn't recognize him and barred his entry at the front door. Before it got nasty, my boss intervened. You got a good watchdog there, he told him. <laughs> Uh, Dan in Newcastle says, I don't want to bark on about it, but this treehouse has really shrubbed me. Oh, no, 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 no. No. No more material, please. Ipswich, Gary. Nick. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, I went and saw John Otway at the Culture Strats in February. Wild Willie Barrett? Uh, yeah, I don't think he was there with him, but there was another guy uh, on stage, um, John Otway's band, mm. and... They played a lot of songs from a, an album called Montserrat, which is recorded on the Isle of Montserrat. So yeah. he, he was, and and he, I know he, he must he, have he must have finished with really free. <laughs> well, well do, you, do you know I spoke to him when I was buying his album, and I, I said I really thought his uh, song. Uh, Gordon is a moron. Is a great song. And That's he was not his. At me. I know, and he was, he was looking at me as if I was the moron. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was John Shuttleworth as um, oh uh, no, don't tell me. Gordon is a moron by oh, I've got that single. What is it? Um, He's a big, tall guy with uh, dodgy hair, as yeah, I, I remember him in the 70s. Yeah, but I, I, what name was it that he went under? I it, think it's it, John... Wasn't it John something? It was John, John Shuttleworth is the guy's name, but yeah. Gordon is a moron. Was, uh, it, it was, the single was by... Oh, no, I'm not going to end the show and I can't <laughs> remember something vitally important like this, uh, can I? Well, uh, uh, that... that David Essex. No, wait. Had, it um, was. Um, hang on a minute. It was. Uh, Jilted John. Jilted John is the right <laughs> answer. Oh, that would have wound me up all night long if I hadn't been able to remember that. <laughs> David Essex had a, a hit in the uh, 70s with a song that went, um, I was looking back at you to see that you were looking too. Uh, and it was sort of Saturday nights, all right. You know, it's sort of, um, I mentioned this fight. last night. Do you remember when uh, David Essex used to be on top of the pops, and um, he used to have? It, it, it's like he put drops in his eyes or something, because he had the most sort of weirdly spangly eyes that used to catch the light in the studio. Do you remember that? It, yeah, it was, it was almost, he had, he, almost kind of looked like a robot. Hair. He had, he had great, great hair as well. Great hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, but. Uh, no, I, I, I just uh, thought you'd be interested. I, I, I did have breakfast in the Rootmaster once on a Saturday morning, which is no longer there, and David Essex was there with his uh, manager and some other guy, and uh, they were obviously going to appear somewhere locally uh, in the evening. Mm. But there you go. Well, the, the only song that I would want to hear, like off the top of my head, is, um, is Rock On, and I, I do declare that that is a great pop song. Well, well what, what about... Um, uh, there's another song. Oh, is he more? Too much more than a pretty face. Uh, now, yeah. Yeah. Now, now on Wednesday at the car boot, I was selling David Essex's album, and I was arguing with this guy about the price and whatever. And anyway, <laughs> I, I, I said you could have it if you could sing um, a song, and I started singing the song, and four other geezers, all about my age, in their sixties. All joined in. <laughs> it's funny how it's was. funny how we can remember the unimportant stuff, but things that really matter just go f- straight out of your mind. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Gary. Um, thanks for uh, the, uh, the like just pages and pages and pages of stuff that I'll never get to. Uh, and finally, Jim says, Nick, you know a lot about music. I can tell. <laughs> no, Jim. <laughs> I can tell you, I know nothing about music. Or anything else, for that matter. I think you'll find that that is correct. Um, I will be back tonight at 10 with my um, abnormal, normal show, 
Ian Payne is here at four o'clock, but first it's Clyde Ball. Clyde, 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 but first it's Clyde Ball.